Hey everyone, this is Prince from DC Programmer. Welcome back to another exciting video in the Node.js MongoDB Express series. And in this video, we are going to talk about EJS, which is a templating engine in Node.js. So in this video, we are basically going to talk about what is a templating engine, how to use EJS, and then how to send our data back from the server to the user, and also how to optimize our code for EJS using PowerShells and all. So before I do that, this in this video, I'm going to use my integrated VS Code terminal, which is available here. And I'm just going to start my server for which I can simply type npm space start. And here I am on my home route which simply says hello. So first I'm going to do a little cleanup right here. We have a lot of messy code. So I'll first delete this about folder completely. Then here I don't want this index.js right now. Let me delete that too. And I'll delete this authroute.js because that too I don't want. Obviously we have already covered all those concepts. So I simply have this index.js file. So as of now, we have been sending data from our backend and we are sending that to the front end where we can see the data. Now, let's say uh, a user has been logged in and you want to send the user's name in the front end. So how do we do that? We can simply do something like, let's say it's const and I have a username and this is equal to, let's say prince as of now. And here, obviously, I can say rest dot send and I, have, I can simply send this username and I'll save this. Let's go back and here, here you have the username, which is simply prince. But hey, do websites look like this? Obviously not. You don't just see a simple text or something website websites look a lot more cooler. So usually what happens is that what we see on our web page is the user interface. That's the front end. And then we have our server, which obviously runs code and does a lot more stuff. Obviously, that's not something we should be talking about in this video, right? We already know what UI is, what user interface is, how, ind how index.html, sorry, any HTML, CSO, JavaScript file is rendered on the front end and then how we have a server and we don't know which what kind of code is running on any server because obviously if we know that we can easily copy any website so that's the case here we have our server which can send data but this doesn't simply render uis so what we are going to use here is something that we know as server side rendering so what we're going to do is that we're going to create our uis on the server side and then we're going to send plain html css javascript files on our Front end because that's what a front end executes. We do have client side rendering where what we do is that we do every rendering on the client side. But here we are going to use server side rendering for the sake of simplicity and also for learning. Now for server side rendering, there are a template, there are multiple templating engines. We have EJS, we have HBS. Anyway, we have handlebars, we have EJS. But in this video, I'm going to use EJS, and there are two simple regions. O1 is that it's basically very simple. You don't have to use anything new you don't have to learn anything new what this stands for is embedded javascript templating as you can see right here all this means is that you can embed your javascript code in a templating a tag and just plain javascript will be then executed and since we're already using node.js obviously not javascript so we won't have to learn anything new now to use that let's go back to our code and if you're using terminal you should go to your terminal since i'm using the integrated terminal i'm going to the integrated terminal and here we have to install EJS for that. All that I'm going to do is I have to say npm i and EJS. And this will install EJS for me. Once I have EJS installed, I have to set EJS as the view engine. To do that, I just go here and I will say app dot set. And the first thing that I have to set is the view engine. So I have to set view engine and then I have to give the name, which is EJS in this case. Then I have to set view directory. So I will say app dot set and then here views. Now remember, if you have a single view directory, you can simply uh, write the part for your view directory. If you have multiple view directory, you have to uh, give it as an array. So if you have multiple view directory, you can do here, you know, like directory one comma directory two and all. Since I have a single view directory, I will do, I will do simply dir name plus comma slash views. Obviously, I don't have views directory as of now. So I have to save this. Then I have to go back and I have to create a views directory at my uh, root. So I will create a views directory. In my views, I will create a simple file. I will name this as index dot. Remember, since it's an EJS file, it ends with an EJS extension. So now we have an index dot EJS for us. And we have an index dot JS where we have our views directory set up. So let's see if everything is correct or not. So I will just do npm and start. Okay, looks like we are good. We are good here. All right, so we are great. Now let's talk about EJS. So basically, this is very simple. All that you have to do is to write your basic HTML code. I will write here, let's say main page. And I don't I really don't have to worry about anything, you know. I can just put a division, then I can put an h1. Let's say I am an I am an awesome website. 
let's save this and now i have to render this page so remember here we are, where we are sending we have to say rest dot and remember we don't have to send a file we have to render a file so i have to say something like rest dot render and here we have to give the name now since we have already set the views directory it knows to search in the views directory i mean since we have already set the views directory it knows to search in the directory which we have set as the views directory which in this case ironically is views so here i have to just say index and also we don't have to specify the extension to because we have set the view uh, we have set the our view engine so now if i save this let's go back let's hit refresh and here you can see i am an awesome website so this is the data that we set here in our index.ejs file but the important part well let's see that let's say here i have a um, p tag and i'm saying welcome friends if i save this if i go back to my browser if i refresh obviously we have welcome friends but let's say there is a user and i want to enter the user's name just as we have here now to do that all that we have to do is to have to put a comma and then here we have to pass our data so i can give your data a key va key value pair so we have a key named as data and then we can have the value let's say username now i can just save this i can go to my index.egs and then here instead of prints i can use a templating engine so to hard code a value we first use these angle brackets then we use two modular signs and the first modular sign is uh, adjoined by this is equal to sign and then we give a space and the write the name that we are sending so in this case it's data now let's remember uh, we have two angle brackets then we have two mod signs and the is equal to and mod this is connected so there shouldn't be any spacing and then we can put out data let's save this let's go back let's refresh and i, I still get hello prince because obviously i have this as prince let's change this to john let's save this let's go back let's refresh we get hello john let's send this to eva let's save this let's go back and we get hello eva so basically this is how it's being rendered and if you want to see the magic let's just right click let's click inspect and this is plain html if you see the body tag in the division we have a p which says welcome eva right but here if i go and change this again back to prince if i save this if i go back if i hit refresh you see welcome prince so what basically is happening here is this is rendering this file based on this data and this is plain javascript which we can put here right and now when i say plain javascript that we can put here let's see the interesting stuff so basically all that e all that you have to do in ejs is that you have to remember three ejs tags right the first ejs tag that you have to remember is this two angle brackets two mod signs and this is equal to and then here you can put any data so this tag is used to enter data so if you want to display some kind of data you can use this tag the second tag that you have to remember is this one where you have two angle signs and then two mod operators and then there is nothing so this tag is used to actually input some javascript code and that will be rendered in our front end then the third one that we'll be talking which will be the same stuff but here we have a single dash and this will be used to include any files so we have talked about this one now let's talk about the second one that's how do we actually input some javascript code now to do that it's actually very simple let's say i'm saying uh, this two we have this simple templating engine code and remember any javascript code should go under this so i'm going to use some if statements i'm saying if then we have a data so if data is is equal to let's say prince right in this case all that i'm going to do is remember this is how we have to write the javascript code so javascript starts here and this ends here and here i don't want any javascript code i want to display some data so i can simply okay let's me simply let me simply use a p tag and i will say that this is prince now let's just take a look at the magic okay let's save let's go back to our browser let's hit refresh and here you see this is prince in our p tag all right let me zoom it a bit so here you see this is prince and here in our p tag you see this is prince because obviously the username is prince like the data that we are sending from our backend is prince but if i change this to john let's save this let's go back let's refresh the line this is prince disappears completely and not just that if you go here in our element if you take a look at this division element you see here we have three empty tags but there is nothing okay there is no p tag which says anything so basically this entire line is being omitted because when we are rendering we see that okay so the username is not prince i don't want to render this particular stuff so this is what server side rendering looks like and this is how you can put some data and then render content based on that obviously later when we are creating project we will talk more about it but let's um, talk about some in, uh, partials and including files 
So basically, let's say here in our body, we have a footer. So this is our footer file. And here I'm simply saying P and uh, I am a footer. Let's save this. Let's go back. Let's hit refresh. And here we have this footer which obviously entered the bottom, but we do have a footer. So what we can do is when you are rendering our files from our server, we can actually embed these codes in certain files. So basically we can distribute our code in certain files and then we can use them whenever we want. So let's say there is some kind of footer that you have to use in multiple pages. So obviously you can copy paste this code uh, no matter how many lines it is, but that's not how we do, right? So all that we can do is simply in our views directory, we can create another folder, let's say partials. Usually we call them partials and what partials has is that it contains all those code which can be used in multiple files. So here let's say create another file and I name it as footer.egs and remember this file can again have its own um, data set like you can write here again you can source some data you can use any kind of uh, javascript code and you can further include more files in this file too but right now all that i'm going to do is that i'm saying footer and there i'm saying at i am a um, footer but from partials so let's save this let's go back to our index.js file now here i'm removing this footer let's save let's go back let's refresh okay we are okay now to do that, now to include that particular file, all that we have to do is angle brackets, mod sign, and then this dash. Here we have to say include, and after include, we have to use these, these um, parentheses. Now here we have to give the path, and this path is relative to the particular file. So since this file is in this directory, which is views, and in the same directory, we have another directory named as partial. So I can do something like dot slash, and then we have partials slash and the file that we want to render here is footer you can again omit the egs part completely but even if i put it let's go back and let's refresh you can see that i get a i am a footer from partials and not just that let's say in our footer again i want to show some data let's say i want to show here um, the username all right so again i can use here the templating engine code which is this and i can say data which is the username that we are sending if i save this if i go back again I hit refresh you can see I am a footer I am a footer from partials and this is my username John so what basically happens here is that whatever data you send to this particular route that is index will be accessible to all the partials which are in this particular file so whatever is there in this index will have access to all this data this is how we can use a normal JavaScript code this is how we can use this um, uh, partials and this is how we can show some data and later when we will be coding multiple projects you will see this is how we are going to use three of them obviously much of it won't make sense any uh, now but later it will and just for fun let's do something let's try to show data based on a user is logged in or not right okay that we can do so let me just get rid of all this content because i don't want it to look messy let's remove this let's remove this and let's remove this all right, so here, what we can do is that, let's say on our server, I'm doing some rigorous check and then I'm sending here a data, let's say uh, logged in status. And here I'm sending either true or false. So let's say here I write some code to check logged in status. And here I'm sending the logged in status to true. Now I can copy this, I can go here let's say this is my nav bar. so i can do something like if the logged in status is true i can just leave it as it is then here i want to see certain things so i want to show uh, a p tag which since the user is already logged in i can show a p tag which says the username and i can show another a tag which uh, kind of redirects user to log out but if the user is not logged in i can show an a tag that says sign up and I can show another e tag that says login. Now, obviously, I can't just run this code because this is still not in the templating engine. So I have to say mod angle bracket. And remember, I have to open it with a mod and angle bracket too. And remember the spaces. Here, I don't need anything. Even here, I don't need anything. In this line, again, I need a mod angle bracket. And uh, sorry, mod and a closing bracket. Again, the same here. We have mod closing 
and then here we have a mod and opening by the sorry we have angle and mod okay i'm a bit confused because it's kind of 2 am and remember if you want to use ejs you can obviously go to the extensions and you can use ejx helper but i'm not going to use that because i lot of, I use a lot of things and if i install a package for everything i will forget whatever i know so let's hit back here and let's refresh and you can see username and logout so since i'm sending the logged in status as true from my server this file is rendering this particular data which is username and logged out and log out and see this code won't even be rendered on our front end okay so if i just right click if i go to inspect and take a look here now element in our body we have a division and then here we have username and we have logout so that's what rendering means this is completely being omitted and if i just save this if i go back to my browser if i say that ah now nah, the user is not logged in if i just say false if i refresh then we get the sign up and login button and now we have two a tags with a sign up and login so this is what rendering means this is what egs does and this is how we can write code based on certain situations and this is how we can optimize code in partials and this is how we can show data that we are sending from the backend and that's pretty much it from my side in this video where we have talked about the egs templating engine obviously i don't get much into deeper there are a lot of deeper concepts into egs like caching setting headers and doing a lot of stuff like you can even render an html file and just replace some data using egs.render file and all but i'm just going to keep it as simple as possible because uh, most of the time you might be skipping into react view or uh, angular platform you might not even be using this but if you're going to use this this is going to handle every job so well that's pretty much it from my side in this video keep coding keep loving keep setting and peace